Good morning and welcome to my studio. Now, if you're going to make a living as an artist, you have to deal with the sales of your work and you have to decide how you want to sell your work. Now, there are basically three different avenues that you can take to achieve sales. So the first and more traditional model is going through commercial galleries. So this is where you either sell your work to a gallery at a wholesale price or they take your work on consignment and once a piece sells, they pay you your consignment fee, which is usually around 50 to 60% of the value of the painting. The other model that's available is doing the art fairs and festivals. So this is where someone else has created and promoted a big show and arranged to have hopefully a lot of people attend and you rent your booth space um, and you show up and you handle your sales for the people that come through this, the show. And the final way is you handling every aspect of it. So where you handle all aspects of marketing, of creating an audience for your work, developing clients, dealing with clients, um, and then handling all of the transactions yourself. Uh, now, most artists uh, over the course of their career will have experience in all three of these various ways of selling your work. So with my solo show coming up, it, uh, it opens this Friday in Toronto. Um, I thought this is a perfect opportunity for me to share with you kind of my thoughts on the pros and cons of the various ways of selling your work and also what my experience has been so far. So I have a solo show uh, coming up this Friday. Uh, it opens at 5 p.m. at uh, 2104 Dundas Street West in Toronto. And this is a big, uh, a big venture for me because this is the first time that I've actually rented a gallery space and totally put on a show all by myself. Now we have had our studio open houses before at my home studio and so we have some experience with putting on a show and doing the promotions and all of this type of thing. But we've never before actually rented a gallery space and gone ahead and promoted and put on our own show. Um, and that's because I've been moving more and more away from dealing with commercial galleries as the exposure to my work and my brand um, is becoming bigger and bigger due to social media. Um, and so today I'm going to talk about, first of all, my experience uh, with how I've navigated this thing throughout the last 18 years of my career, I guess almost 20 years of my career as, a, as an artist. Um, and then I'll get into the pros and cons of each one over the course of this week. And we'll talk about the things that I'm kind of learning and things that I have to do and deal with as we get ready to promote our first uh, pop-up gallery show. I also just want to mention, um, as I say, the show, my show opens uh, in like five days. So that is the main focus for the next five days for me. This is probably the most important, biggest week of the year for us. So while I'm going to try to put a vlog out every day, um, there may not be a vlog every day. It's just, as you can imagine, getting ready to put on a show. There's a lot of stuff that has to get done. Um, so if there is not a vlog every single day this week, that's why. And next week, you can expect to see me doing my vlogs from the actual gallery. So I'm looking forward to that. So let's talk about my experience with sales and the route that I've taken. The very first sales that I did was totally um, with me doing all the marketing, the promoting, and that was with my very first open houses. And that was back when I was still on the police force. Uh, and then a lot of my work that was done while I was still on the police force was commission work. So I was doing portrait commissions. And that was just really um, grown through word of mouth. And my big thing there was I wanted everyone to be totally happy with their work. So when I started out doing portrait commissions, there was no down payment or requirement to buy. Uh, my feeling was, and my policy was, if, you, if I don't create a painting that the client would love to have, then I didn't want them to have it. And that actually went very well um, while I was still interested in doing portraits. But as I mentioned earlier, after several years of painting other people's family members the way that they wanted me to paint them, I got very sick of that um, and gradually kind of moved more into landscape. 
So at that time, um, when I moved into landscape, then I started looking for gallery representation. And I was actually picked up and carried by a few local galleries here in the Whitby area. And I actually thought, oh boy, I'm in a gallery now. Like, the sales are just going to come rolling in. Um, and nothing could have been further from the truth. Um, and, and so for those of you who are looking to get into a gallery, you have to think of it in terms of if you're coming into a gallery at an entry level, um, the gallery probably already has a number of artists that they've been with for years that have been very good for sales, and that's the artist that they're going to push. Plus that artist's prices are probably quite a bit higher than yours. So when you first get into a gallery, it's very unlikely um, that in your first gallery forays, you're going to have a lot of sales. Um, and so just be prepared for that. At that time, I was also doing my studio open house. And then I was a member of the Oshawa Art Association, which had an annual art festival, the Camp Samac show and sale, which was held in a big hall. And I participated in that every year. But that was pretty much it for me for the... Um, the first three or four years that, uh, that I was painting full time, I was relying a lot on word of mouth commissions. I was getting very few sales uh, through the galleries. I still did well during my studio open houses um, and did okay at the festivals. Um, but for the first three or four years, sales were pretty sparse. Um, and across the board, I was probably earning in the eighteen to twenty-one thousand dollars a year in terms of gross revenue coming in, which is not an awful lot of money. Now things changed for me when another friend of mine, an artist, Marilyn Mercer, kind of got me onto the whole art festival circuit, uh, and I didn't even realize this was going on out there. I knew there was the one little local um, art festival that I participated in. But it turns out there's a whole circuit of festivals going on where there's almost an art festival every weekend somewhere within a four or five hour drive. Um, and so that year, that was around 2004, I guess, I actually I went out and bought a tent, um, and bought all the display stuff, and I started actively doing the art festivals. And that's where my career really took off. So I was doing for about two years um, I was still in a couple galleries, but again, having just moderate sales. Um, and I still hadn't developed my own voice yet either. So I was kind of all over the map. Uh, but that made it very difficult for putting stuff into the galleries. So when I was doing the festival circuit, that gave me the opportunity to kind of to, to play in process mode and bring literally different, different styles of work to every show and also gauge the public's reaction in terms of which, which type of work uh, people found more appealing. And over the course of that two years, um, my sales really started picking up to the point that I would, you know, I would expect on a weekend festival to do anywhere from $3,000 to $6,000 in sales and was doing that on a regular basis. And that was the first year, um, the, my second year doing the festivals was the first year when I actually made over $30,000 a year. Um, and that was always kind of a, a benchmark for me because I thought at that time, that's probably about what my pension would have been um, if I could have retired on full pension then. And I didn't retire, or I quit my job and took commuted value of my pension. But I thought, okay, if I can get to the point where I'm making $30,000 a year as an artist, um, then that's probably going to be, you know, about a wash in terms of lifetime earnings that I would make. So it's not going to put my family in any sort of uh, financial duress. Um, and that was doing the festivals. Um, and so then I started thinking about, okay, maybe I should do some bigger festivals. Uh, because I was only doing kind of smaller ones where the fees were you know, anywhere from 100 to $300 to do the show. So this was in about 2005, um, and I had one of my gallery owners at the time that I'd become quite good friends with, um, who was really, really excited about this new style of work that I was doing. He was really, really pushing me to go to one of the big festivals that was in Toronto, which was the Toronto Indoor Art Festival, I think it was called. It's not in existence anymore. But this was a big show at the Toronto Convention Center. <clears throat> Excuse me. But it was going to cost about $3,000 to do the show. So I was going to spend more on this one show um, than on basically all of my 
uh, fees for all of the festivals I did the previous year. But he was really, really insistent that I do this. He thought that this work was going to have a really broad appeal um, and that I needed to get it in front of a large group of people. And the fact that this show typically had a higher caliber of artist and collected a higher caliber of collector. Um, so I decided to kind of cross my fingers, hold my breath. I, I um, applied for the show, submitted my fee, and ended up getting accepted. Uh, and then, you know, I just kind of waited. And this was also, like I say, this was in my sixth year. Things were kind of, they had gotten better the year before, but this was still kind of a touch and go thing in terms of whether this, this was going to be a really good move for me or not, or whether I might have to one day go out and get another job to kind of supplement my income. So um, I remember I, I got my booth ready and the show opened on a Thursday at 11 o'clock. Marley's going crazy in there. Um, at 11, by 11.30, I had made my booth feedback. And over the course of that weekend, um, I did almost 28, I think I did 28,000 in sales, almost 30,000 in sales. Um, and I knew then that there was going to be no kind of turning back for me. I just that the kind of response that I got was just so overwhelming. Um, but that is literally the, the night that my career changed. And I remember even driving home with my wife, Diane, and telling her, like, remember this night, because we'll always think of before this and after this. Now, the other thing that happened as a result of this, and one thing I've found, um, is that there's no better way to get galleries interested in selling your work than to show to them that you can sell a lot of your work. Uh, because by the end of this show, I had the business cards of about 15 different gallery owners who were asking me to consider showing with their galleries. So I ended up uh, picking a few galleries uh, and then started showing with them. And these were fairly, uh, the ones that I chose were, were fairly high profile galleries that had really high profile clients. Um, and that's when my gallery sales really started taking off. So I think I was in about five galleries after that show. I picked the five that I wanted to be in. Um, and I was still doing festivals though, not as many because I was sending the works to the galleries, um, but I was still doing maybe five or six festivals a year. And so for that first year, again, my, my earnings went up. I made over 50,000 that year, and then I made $80,000 the next year. Um, and so I just, again, I was kind of over the moon um, and then I had a conversation with Terry Coyman, uh, one of the owners of Coyman Galleries. So I had been doing very well with Coyman Galleries and they were giving me a lot of exposure um, and I was having a lot of sales through them. Um, but Terry had a conversation with me one day where he said, you know, if you really want to see what you can do in terms of gallery sales and take your career to the next level, um, then you need to make a decision whether you want to show in galleries or whether you want to do the festivals. Um, because he said, if you are only giving us the works that you don't sell at a festival, you'll never know how far we could take your work. Um, but he said, I can tell you, if you have a piece that's at an art festival that has 10,000 people walk by it and no one buys it, um, it's very unlikely that I'm going to be able to sell it right away or at all because I don't get those kind of numbers through my gallery. So I, I decided that uh, I thought that maybe he was right. Um, and so what I did is I cut out all of the festival shows except for the McMichael Gallery show, which was the last one that I kind of hung on to. Uh, because for those of you who don't know, the McMichael Gallery is the spiritual home of the Group of Seven, which is our Canadian art icons. Um, and they did a fundraising show every year um, that went to su support the children's programs at the gallery. And that gallery is where the light bulb first turned on to me about being, being very interested in art. Um, so after that conversation, I didn't book any more shows and did an entire year of just giving everything to my galleries other than the McMichael show and my studio open house. And that was the first year that I made over $100,000. Uh, so I was very happy and content with that. So that went on for, I guess, probably about a dozen years where I was quite content to just paint in my studio, send my work 
uh, out to the galleries, let them handle the sales. I would do my studio open house every year and I would bring work back from the galleries, have my open house and then rotate the pieces back out to my commercial galleries. And that went very well um, up until just a little over two years ago. So around two years ago, I was in a, over a dozen galleries across Canada. I was in a gallery, a couple of galleries down in the States um, and sales were going really well. And that was the time that I decided to start my YouTube channel. Um, because I decided that yes, I, it was time to give back and I wanted to share everything I'd learned to help other artists kind of uh, achieve their dreams. And so I started getting into social media and, and doing the social media mainly to just promote me and the fact that I have this YouTube channel and I'm putting all of this out there for free to try to gain an audience there. And what happened was that actually started generating a lot of direct contact with clients who were contacting me directly about buying either originals or giclés. Um, and what I was doing, because I had no inventory at home, I was basically doing an, an incredible job of promoting my work and my brand. People were coming to me and then I was just sending them to the galleries where they would then make the sale and the gallery would take their 40 or 50 percent. Um, and I realized at a certain point that's not a really good business uh, strategy for me to do all the work to promote the work um, and to gain the client contact and then just give away 50% of the sale. So that's when I started rethinking this whole kind of process um, and decided that what I was going to do was cut way, way back on the galleries that I was in. Um, and focus just staying with the three that I've been with the longest and the ones that have um, really had a positive impact on helping grow my career. And I basically cut off all my other galleries and now we're focused very much on doing the direct to client model. Um, and then we also opened our Shopify store last year and have direct sales available on all of our reproductions um, on the store and we're shipping originals and reproductions around the world. And so the culmination of this whole thing now is this show that I have coming up uh, later this week with our very first pop-up gallery um, exhibition. So I'm really excited about this and I really think that going forward um, it's just going to be more and more um, kind of focused on things that I'm doing to promote my work and I'm doing to sell my work and creating the actual shows and events themselves. But this is a process. Um, and so this whole kind of area is uncharted territory too, because while that whole model of being able to, you know, rent a gallery and have your show, they actually used to call these vanity galleries because it was for people that couldn't get a show at a commercial gallery. You know, you could rent a gallery and put on your own show. Um, but those types of things were often more just a social event and weren't really um, necessarily commercially successful because there was no way that an individual artist had generally, unless they were a really big name, to promote the show themselves. Well, now with social media and the ability to reach huge audiences uh, with very little advertising dollars and also target your message to people who live where your event is going to be, that whole thing has been kind of turned on its head. Um, so I feel really, really fortunate to be in the position I'm in right now um, with where my career is, but also with how I've kind of dove, dove into social media and actually feel very confident about using this as a vehicle um, to promote shows that I can put on myself. Um, and so, yeah, I'm just very excited about, about this show and about the next few years. Um, and so I think that's where I'm going to end it today. So that's kind of been my whole story. Um, I'll just say that last year, our first year of really, really throwing ourselves into social media, um, we had more, we created more revenue, more earnings for us off direct to client sales than the total that came in from all the galleries that I was in. Um, and I was still in up until the end of the year, I was still in about six galleries. I'd gradually been cutting them back. Um, so that was something that I also felt made me feel very confident about taking this step. Now, what I'm going to do over the next couple days is I'll go in detail in terms of each of those um, models of selling your work and what I have found to be the pros and cons. 
Um, and then I also will get into behind the scenes of things that we're doing to get ready for the show. But uh, I think that's it for today. So if you enjoyed this, as always, give me a thumbs up, like this. I welcome your comments and questions. Uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe and share this with your friends. I'm Tim Packer, and I thank you for your time.